Hello, um, I'm back again. Um, had a couple more deliveries of bits and pieces. We've had the drive chain from China, the, the cheap one, not the Igus one, Igus, Igus, whatever it's called. Even the cheap one, never print yourself a drive chain again. Um, I used to have a printed chain on the printer over there and it was, you know, always at funny angles and it never quite straightened out and you could hear it moving, whereas this, Smooth as butter in comparison. I should imagine the Igus ones, the expensive ones, are probably even better. One thing I would say is I bought two kind of end bits that are extra end sets. So you've got your screw holes to screw into your printed part. However, I since found out you don't need to buy them. Save yourself literally a quid or so per set. Print your own. So I've done mine in my nice accent colour. Um, I'm going to move over to the bench in a minute, but before I do that, I have been messing around on the computer a little bit. Um, first thing I did, I thought I'd go all Vorony and have a little look at Super Slicer. So I uploaded it, so I downloaded it, had a little play, literally a, this is pretty much default with a low wall count and infill setting for a quick print to try. Played around with it and literally just had my first print off, which is a little calibration cube, and it's come out really nicely. But of course, I've changed two things at once, which you should never do. You should only ever change one thing at once. So I have changed the slicer, but I've also changed my firmware on the printer, and I've decided that you know what. I need to get my head around Clipper, so I use Clipper as well. Had to cobble myself together a bit of a config because, of course, it's on an Ender 3, which you can get a config for, and it's on an SKR 1.4 Turbo, which you can get a config for, but then you've got to try and marry the two up, and it, it took me a little while just to kind of work through it, but I got there in the end. I uh, didn't have to ask any silly questions or anything. I need to work out what this unknown command thing is because, yeah, it keeps telling me that, but never mind. But yeah, I'm quite impressed with Clipper. Um, and of course, Super Slicer, I've got talking directly to it because it pretends that it's a... Uh, pretend it's an Octoprint interface, and I can just go, yep, yeah, chuck it straight up, off you go. You can start printing straight after you upload. So it's, it's quite good. I'm quite impressed by that. And the way the two work together. And like I say, it's a, it's a nice cube considering nothing is calibrated yet. The only thing that I've kind of done is I've calibrated my E-steps uh, in terms of the, you know, snip, 100mm, measure it up, adjust your steps, um, put it back. But yeah, it's a nice little cube. I'll try it again once I get it dialed in and I'll take some decent close-up photos of it. Yeah, so this is uh, a couple of bits. So I've been attaching them to the printed DIN rail mounts and attached them up. This obviously is your Pi. I bought the big old heat sink, so hopefully the Pi's famous cooling issues won't be too much of a problem for me. This is actually a board by someone called Quindor. Um, he runs a really good channel, which I'll link at the end of the video, or put it down in the description. This is his Quindor quad board. Um, you buy literally the blank PCB from China, the one that's right underneath there, then you solder on all your components and the buck converter and that sort of thing. So you feed your 24 volts in this end. Buck converter steps it down for your little ESP32 board. And then you've got four ports at this... Hey, I can't plug in. And you've got four ports at this end and a common ground over there. That you can then drive four independent strings of LEDs off or... Uh, whatever and those will run on the input so I've got some 24 volt LEDs uh, that was a strip I showed you earlier that I tried to blind myself with because this was set at 100% but yeah comes through here it'll allow me to fine-tune the lighting I'll probably have you know different strips on different things to try and get it just right um, I'll probably also put in one of his dig controller boards which is obviously for your neo pixels for your WS 2812s because you know need a bit of disco in your life. Uh, mounted my uh, SSR onto his little metal plate and we'll probably have to do something about that wobble because it'll absolutely kill me. 
The big news for this week, though, is sat behind me. Uh, we'll have a close look at it on the bench when I show it to you there, but... FedEx actually delivered my package, and I kind of thought they wouldn't. I'm learning the lesson now to put my OBS screen underneath my camera, not on that monitor over there that I keep looking at. So yeah, I had a chat with the guys on the forum about the, uh, on the Discord, sorry, about best ways for drilling, because some of those I know are machinists by trade and that sort of thing. So drilled my three holes. Uh, it wants 3.4 mil all the way through, and I can kind of see why. You try and get a 3.4 mil drill bit without specially ordering it. So mine are three and a half. I'm hoping that won't make too much of a difference. If it does, I may just have to kind of pad around the holes. Uh, countersunk with the wider piece. I think that was a five and a half or was it six and a half? I can't remember. It's on the spec sheet. But you countersunk there. So your M3 bolt nicely comes through here and doesn't interfere at the top of the plate. And that's where all your parts bolt onto. So obviously your, your two points here where your X motors are gonna do your gantry leveling and your bolt here with the spring on it with the thumb screw to tighten up to do the trim on the front. Of course, where it is a three point leveling system, you have to make sure that this and your uh, frame are in line with each other. Otherwise, it's gonna to report to you when you do something like a bed mesh, that this is up in one corner and you're gonna be, well, how do I change it? I've not got a screw here and a screw here like I have on, say, the end of bed. I've only got the one screw in the middle. But that's telling you that, um, I'm not sure if it's called tramming, I could be making that up, that this and your frame are not quite in line. I'm not clever enough to have worked that out myself. I know it because other people have told me and other people have said so. Um, I've also drilled the holes in the back for, it says to drill one for your thermal views and one for your grounding. I'm only going to be putting a grounding in, but I don't know what side I want my grounding yet. So I put one in both sides and I actually tapped that as well. So that'll take an M5 screw when they finally arrive. They're in the country. Customs have had them since Thursday, according to Royal Mail. And I thought they're taking their time again. Checked this morning. And Custom said, yes, we gave them to the Royal Mail today. So Royal Mail are going, yeah, we don't know what we're doing here. But never mind, shock horror. Seems to be a common thing with couriers. Going to have a little bit of footage about how I drilled this. And I will apologise now if I make any machinists or metal workers cry with my butchery of this lovely prime cast aluminium slab from Steve at Metalex. He did come through good for me, though. So without further ado... We'll go and have a little closer look at it on the bench um, because me waving this around is not really helpful on this camera. And I keep looking over there again, don't I? I'll learn. I'll learn. Right, to the bench. So, here we are on the bench. No shaky cam today, which is good. Um, I've actually got it in a little clip. As you can see here, the calibration cubes come out quite well. The, the Z-seam ironing on the top is potentially not the best, needs a little bit of work, but you know, early days. But the rest of it, I'm quite impressed with. He's really quite sharp. But yeah, for a quick close up of the bed, like I say, I have butchered it ever so slightly, but you know, first time and all that, it's not too bad. The holes have come out quite well. Um, nice and smooth, no sharp edges. If I spin it around this way, like I said, put a tap in these, so you can probably just about make out the screw thread there so that the M5 will stick. Uh, I can't try it because I don't have any M5 screws, it turns out. Um, yeah, and the countersunk hole there, it's, it's a lovely piece of metal and it looks lovely and flat too. So we shall have to see how it goes. Hello, welcome to uh, the garage. It's a bit of a bomb site. As you can tell, I've got lots of hobbies and this is kind of where they all get stored and all the dirty jobs happen. Um, finally, FedEx have delivered my bill plate from Metalex. Uh, like I say, if you're in the UK, you should be able to buy one very, very soon from a UK supplier, pre-drilled and everything. 
but today I've just got a lump of metal. I need to put some holes in it. I'm going to try this again with an autofocus lock this time, so hopefully it'll work a bit better. Uh, I'm trying to go straight through with the M5. I've got a feeling I may be biting off more than I can chew. So I think that'll about wrap it up for today. Um, there's probably quite enough in there to be going on with. Um, the dig board that controls the WS2812s that I spoke about earlier is what does all of this fancy stuff behind me. It's washing out a little bit on camera, but it's a bit more vivid in real life. Um, don't think that the shave is for you guys. It's not. I had to go out today and actually see people I know. It was a return to fat club and I have put on a lot of weight again not as much as I lost so it's still still a game and hopefully the audio quality is better because I've actually got the good mic going um, if you want to know why I have this sort of thing I'll link down below to uh, silly things that me and my friends get up to just for fun or did get up to before uh, we all found other hobbies and far too many hobbies everyone's got to have a hobby anyway yes I really am going now um, I'm going to go and try the pressure advance settings in Clipper and see if I can get that dialed in a bit better. But um, speak to you next time. I may have a frame. You never know. I'm hoping it's in the country somewhere. But it's being delivered by FedEx to a Metporium. So hopefully they do a better job of delivering to him than they did of delivering to me. But anyway, see you next time, guys. Don't forget, like, subscribe. All good. Speak to you soon. Bye.